responding to risks, providing uh, emotional support. So if we do decide to go swimming, you gonna dive in with us? No. Unless you're thinking of conducting competitive research? Oh! Uh, forget Paimon said anything. Great work. I've never seen a performance quite like it. Your reputation precedes you, Traveler. The data shows that you're easily outperforming the average citizen in Mondstadt. But you followed us the whole way without breaking a sweat! Me? Actually, I used alchemy to cheat a little. But anyway, if it turns out that the natural laws of Tevad do not affect you, I should be able to make various inferences about the otherworldly civilization you belong to. If the natural laws of Tevat do affect you, then I shall be able to make inferences into the kind of evolution that would occur under the absence of such effects. The innumerable possibilities that this could present, the captivating insights, it would be something to savor again and again. But how does this help your research? You've helped me to unravel many of the problems that were holding it back. When we return, I may be about to make some analogies between you and a few... unusual specimens. I hope you won't be offended. Gold, petrified trees, a sun eight times the size of our own. The essence of the investigative process is enthralling, but such feelings are inevitably fleeting in nature. I'm willing to pour all my energy into research, and yet specimens are finite. As the unknown transitions into the realm of scientific understanding, the feeling of enlightenment is lost. All these things that start out as objects of fascination end up possessing the prosaic mundanity of a sunsetia or a sweet flower. They cease to be noteworthy. Oh, so that's why you wanted to sketch those hilly churls? Because you got to see something new and interesting and the differences between them? Precisely. To quote my exact words from earlier, these creatures are, for the most part, quite boring, not worth closer inspection. There is precious little about them that serves to pique my curiosity now. So after all these experiments, are we gonna be, like, boring to you, like sketches? Of course not. You have been of great assistance to me, and I will remember this friendship for a lifetime. Now. Before we head back to the campsite, there is one more experiment. Intelligence. Follow me. There are some other ruins nearby.
I imagine you must have encountered more than a few conundrums during your travels. I'd like to observe your intelligence by means of a practical test of your capabilities, much as we did for the physical test. I'd like you to explore these ruins and return with your findings. There are two puzzles located at the far ends of the ruins. After completion, you should be able to activate the mechanism in the center. As with the physical test, there are no restrictions. Everything you do is an action I wish to observe. Remember that this is a test of intellect. So should you get lucky in any way, that won't be factored in as part of the test. So, let's see you in action. Start wherever you like. It's a complex environment, so proceed with caution. Sealy like these are a common sight in the mountains. Returning them to their rightful places is up to you.
It should now be possible to activate the central mechanism. Exactly what will happen when you do is something I'm looking forward to finding out. Oh, seems that the water level has suddenly decreased. We should be able... What's this? To the best of my knowledge, these belong to a script of some kind. They can be found all over Tavat, but they've never given up their secrets. There's still a lot to learn about them. And as for why they should ever have come to rest here, a true mystery. Let me make a copy first. I'll make time to go over them in greater detail after our research. <sighs> Another thing for the don't understand list. Unsolvable mystery this, weird experiment that. 
It'd be nice to get some cool results for once. Seems like if you want the reward, you gotta pay the price. I've truly gained a lot from all this. Comparatively, the little reward I can offer is too small to mention. Let me return to the campsite first. By the time you get back, I may just have a fleeting miracle for you to witness. Paimon's kind of looking forward to seeing the result of all this brain ache. Unless you can think of anything better to do, let's head back to the campsite. Not so fast. You're not leaving until I'm convinced that nothing dangerous is going on here. <gasps> you! You didn't leave the mountain? I most certainly did not. And I've witnessed everything that you and Albedo have been up to. I must say, you let your guards down. Or maybe you were drawn in by his compelling-sounding hypothesis and friendly demeanor. Taking orders from a complete stranger? Drinking anonymous potions? Participating in all kinds of strange experiments? I'd sooner believe you were tricked than that you would be so naive. Or perhaps... You were colluding from the beginning. Listen, sister. Your guard's so high you can't even see over the top of it! It doesn't matter what you think. He could be a saint for all you know. But I understand him a little better than you, Outlander. I'm only concerned with one thing. Whether his alchemy has transformed you into something more sinister. No way! Paimon would have sensed it! And anyway, he didn't even use any alchemy! With an alchemist of his level, you wouldn't sense a thing. In any case, I'm not about to let a potential threat back into Mondstadt. So... what are you gonna do? <laughs> I've gotta hand it to you. You have your moments. If I can be sure that nothing you came into contact with is dangerous, that's good enough for me. I've investigated everything else. The only items left on the agenda are these symbols. But we don't even know what they mean. Hmm. That much is true. Not to mention, seems like there's nothing more to them. But for insurance purposes, I'd better make a copy. Hmm. This is now a location of interest. Regular patrols should be set up here. Now then, all things considered, I deem that you pose no immediate threat. Which is what I was hoping. I would have been one very unhappy sister if you'd made me work overtime on your account. Overtime? Before we go our separate ways, Outlander, a word of advice. Don't be so quick to trust Albedo, and don't repeat the same mistakes that you did this time. You made a lot of rash decisions today. She's gone! So stubborn. Monsad doesn't have many people like that. Huh. Never mind her. Let's go see Albedo. You're back. Good timing. I've just about reached the conclusion. You took quite a while. Did you get held up on the way back? Time for the results. We got a myriad of data today, and it was very difficult to finish all the research in one go. But the integral preliminary conclusion that I can offer you is... You're very much like a human from this world. You couldn't tell that just by looking? We spent all day working our butts off for that?! Please, I understand that this may have seemed self-evident to you. But in fact, nothing in this world should be taken for granted. Have you ever considered that the world of Tevat may have a natural hostility to Outlanders? 
I mentioned the natural laws of this world. You're able to converse with me here without consequence, and nothing seems amiss. But it's arguably a small miracle. The only other life form that, like you, has come here from afar is the seed that I mentioned. Under the effects of Tavat's natural laws, it isn't even able to sprout, let alone bloom. But after I observed you, I had another idea. Imitating you helped to inspire my alchemy. And so... Whoa! It looks like something's appearing! The transition from nothing into something, from shoot to stem, and now to fruition. Is not nurturing otherworldly life also nurturing the world itself? It would seem that that's as far as we go. A transient bloom of incomparable beauty. Life's proudest achievement. Paimon thought with all our efforts, it might have bloomed forever. And it didn't even have any fruit. Life is a manifold tapestry of free entities. Its value shouldn't derive from how long it stays with us. Even a momentary burst is precious. A short life can be well lived. A life lived efficiently, lived to perfection, is necessarily one unburdened by loneliness. So, do you understand what I meant about us conversing here arguably being a small miracle? Huh? Things feel a little heavy right now. <laughs> Don't be sad. You've got Paimon to look after you. Albedo, Paimon really wants to be your friend. Thank you both. Even if dispelling loneliness is not essential for life, it certainly doesn't hurt. Your help inspired me to discover the means to make a flower bloom. I mean that the time I've spent traveling with you in the mountains was a valuable journey for me. In the future, if the need arises, can I solicit your help again? Well, glad I can count on you. I made a point throughout of telling him how ordinary the results were. But what was that sediment I saw forming at the bottom of the vial? It should not have been there. What could it mean? Those born of earth are bound by its imperfections. But those born of chalk are free of impurities. You and I are alike. Both composed of a substance that has yet to be fully defined. If, one day... I lose control. Destroy Mondstadt. Destroy everything. Can I rely on you to stop me? Huh? Look at that! Looks like someone made camp here! Are other people adventuring nearby? Let's see how our fellow explorers are doing! 